everyone, welcome to Kelly's Creative Dream Studios where anything can happen and today that anything is Friday Freebie and we are working on the belly band element for the August Assembly Line Junk Journal Challenge with Dear Julie Julie and I've decided I wanted to use this gate. Now, this is one of them that I made first and I've since decided we need to modify and we're going to modify it on the fly today while we do this video. But as you can tell, the intricate stuff back behind here makes it hard to slide things down in behind. So we're going to fix that. I am using a retired set from Stampin' Up! called Graveyard Gate. This was in our Halloween catalog about three years ago. And you have this very intricate die to work with that cuts out the gate. And we also have a lock and key to work with. So that's what we're going to work with as well as the crow stamp and the lamp post. So let's get started so we can do this semi on time. I have cut a piece of eight and a half by 11 cardstock to eight and a half by five and a quarter. This will make it just a little bit smaller than the page in my book. And the way I'm positioning the belly band, if I need to make it a shorter, I can do that. But right now it's at five and a quarter by eight and a half. Okay, then we have our garden gate. And I've got a couple of these that I had cut. I had planned to do all nine of them ahead of time. But as you can see, there's some damage to the wrought iron where the die wasn't cutting very well because I needed to shim it. And I started, once I shimmed it with uh, a dryer sheet, it actually did better. And then I used my detail brush to get a lot of the intricate little pieces out, brushed them out. But if you've seen this detailing brush in black foam from Sizzix to get all of your intricate little pieces out, my bristles just disintegrated and fell out of this. So I've got to come up with another source for this. So I'm going to use one here that's mostly in better shape. And I'm going to use my red line tape. Now you can use the tear and tape as well. In fact, maybe let's just go ahead and do that so you can see how well this works. And I'm going to run it down the side here. And I'm going to run a piece right across the top. Now that's really super narrow and it's narrower than my tape. So I'm going to wind up cutting a length of my tape. A length of my tape just a little bit narrower. Now I use, you can get lots of good titanium nonstick scissors. These are from Westcott. I bought these at Walmart for under 10 bucks and they work really well. And the idea is, is you can go in and you can cut sticky stuff and your scissors don't stick. It sticks to everything else. And I'm going to stick this right up here on the camera and let it, well, maybe not. We'll stick it down here on the, I'm trying to get it to turn loose of me. I'll stick it down here on the TV remote, and that'll hold the end in place for me while I cut this down. And we'll come back and use that one for maybe the bottom here. We're going to run this across the top of the gate. Now, this is where I discovered this on the fly. And I'm also going to show you a trick if you have adhesive that shows through when we're done. I'm going to show you how to fix that too. Now we're going to make sure that our glue isn't on the edges here. And we're going to clip that off. And we'll go ahead and put this other half down here on the bottom. And I realized I cut it a little large and gave myself some room here, but that's all right. We can do that. And then this side is big enough for a whole width, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Peel this back here. And I'm going to take my, my brand new bone folder from Stampin' Up. I can't seem to keep track of bone folders. The little needle tool, the pink needle tool from Dollar Tree has a, a bone folder type attachment on the bottom of it and it works really well. And then what I've done is I have a, this started out as a 6x6 six six paper keeper 
uh, envelope for putting uh, your 6x6 six six papers in. And I cut one down to fit the size of the gate. And we're going to go back and we're going to peel our paper off of our tape. Now the reason I'm using this tape and not like a double double adhesive tape runner or anything is this stuff has a little bit this is some call it score tape some call it tear and tape it has a little bit better stickability to things that don't necessarily hold an adhesive such as plastic now this will not be perfect mind you but it will allow me to slide papers in and out of the pocket now the fun part is going to be getting this to match up on the edges without me getting my fat little head in the way. Okay, just burnish that down. Now we've got we've got sticky spots both on the front and on the back, and we're going to fix those here just as soon as we go in and trim our excess plastic off where we were just a little bit too large. I don't think we've got any sticky yet. We got a little bit right there. So here's what you want to have in your craft room to get rid of the stickies. Baby powder and a cotton ball will get rid of your stickies. Any place that you've got glue showing that you don't want to be sticky anymore, dab it with some baby powder and that will take that sticky right away. If it leaves a little bit of the residue of the powder, that's okay. It'll wear off. You can also go back um, You can also go back with a paintbrush. See if I can find a soft one here. And dust any excess off. And that will cover up your sticky. Okay, next if you use dimensionals, you probably have sheets where you've pulled off the little dimensional dots and you've got this stuff left over. Now, I measured this to know that this needed to be two holes shy of a full sheet. So what I do is I will go back and trim the holes off. Now, I don't throw these away. These little pieces are great for putting behind small items. And then I'm going to hang on to two of these strips. Because what I want to do is I want to create a little dimension behind this so that my papers will slide in and out easier. That little dimensional dot was determined. And so I'm going to take that, run it right down the side. And I'm going to burnish it in good because I want to make sure that it sticks to that plastic sheeting. And I will tell you that this is the second time I filmed this video because I got to this stage and realized that I should have put the plastic down before I put the adhesive sheet down. And that plastic sticking up is just really bugging me. And now, as soon as we get the stickies off, we can go back and tear our paper off our dimensional, just like that, and adhere it to our page. And this is going to let stuff slide behind our pocket a whole lot easier on our belly band. Now, the next thing we're going to do is I've got, let me do something here. Let me switch things around. I've got the lamp post, but I didn't want the whole length of the lamp post. I wanted just part of it to show up here. So what I'm doing is I'm putting a piece of paper down here to act as a mask. And I'm inking up my stamp with Memento Tuxedo Black. Determining where that post is. And where I want to center my lamp. Straight down straight up and there's our lamp post on that side then i'm going to come over here and do the lamp post on this side now we're supposed to have three elements 
and this is considered my base the smoky slate I'm considering my base so the gate is one element and the for me the lamp posts are part of the gate so I'm counting them together as one one element now I had a yellow glaze pen I was going to color the lamp in with but it's dried up so I am using the dark pineapple punch and I tested it, and it does pretty good on coloring in this lamp post. And I'm not going all the way up. Just giving it a little bit of a glow in here. Nothing perfect. And then we're going to use glue dots. And I just had actual glue dots here a minute ago. Not the, not the dimensionals. Here they are. Actual glue dots. And I'm going to position one right up here on top of this lamp post one about there one down to the center of the gate and I think I want one right about I think I want another one right about here now why am I putting glue dots on there I'm going to burnish them in with the end of my needle tool. And pick off the paper tops. And then I have spider webbing. And I just cut off a piece of it. Nothing, nothing really big. And what I want to do is just really stretch it out. Because remember, this, the gate to this house has been unused for quite some time. And I'm just going to position that cobwebbing right across there and let it pick up the glue dots. And then that powder comes back into play. Because we want that to stick to the glue dot, but not everything else stick to the glue dot that's shining through so we're just going to go back and do that and that will cover up the rest whatever part of that glue dot that the sticky that the cobweb isn't touching and then I took the crow stamp and I stamped him on the smoky slate so he had pretty much the same color coating and wouldn't jump out and this is another one where you want to make sure you go straight down and straight up or you're going to smear your and you don't push down hard just kiss your paper and there's your crow and then we're going to use the tiny scissors and cut him out really quick and I'm cutting relatively close to everything as I can Okay, as I get everything ready to go for tomorrow, I'm really looking forward to these three days in the hotel. I wish I'd gotten more stuff done around the house for Bob, but it is what it is. This is actually my three days I'm not playing. I'm not doing a lot of shopping. I'm locking myself away in the hotel. Now we have... The black dimensionals from Stampin' Up! And we have these in two sizes. These are the tiny ones. And I'm going to come back and I just want a piece of that edge. And actually, I think there's one right here I can use. Right here on this little corner piece. And he's perfect. Fits perfectly on the back of that crow. Can you see that? Yeah, there we go. And then I'm going to pop the paper off of him. And he's, because of the direction he's sitting, I'm going to put him right on top of that lamppost. Now, the other thing we need is, hold that thought, I thought I brought a lock with me. This is the lock and key that I cut out, and I cut these out of the brushed copper toned uh, metals from the new holiday catalog of the brush metallics and again I used a little bitty pop dot or not a pop dot a glue dot 
And most of my glue dots I have gotten in paper pumpkin kits, so I have a wide selection of them <laughs> to play with. Pick that piece of paper out of there. And I just positioned that glue dock just up in the relative corner of the lock. And now I'm going to push the key on there. Okay, and then I'm coming back with four more of those glue dots. And I'm going to put them in each corner of the lock itself. And then I can come back and pick the papers off. I had to cut all of my fingers.